These pieces of text are jumping around. There's no way in hell Harry hears this flying car. The only way he could have been woken up just in time to see it is, you guessed it, magic. Yes, there is a way. Harry's eyes are closed, but you can't know he's asleep. If that is the case, then it's completely reasonable that he gets up and looks for the car. Ron! Fred! George! Thanks for the roll call, Harry. Believe it or not, some people refer to their friends by name, especially when they show up out of nowhere, surprisingly. Dad works in the Ministry of Magic. Harry and Ron had a whole year to get to know each other and Ron's dad's job never came up? I have friends I've known for years, but I still don't know their parents' occupation. Furthermore, they spent a year in the most exciting place in the world. I'm not surprised they didn't speak about their boring home lives that much. And who are you? Seriously? One of the most famous wizards in all the land, and Arthur Weasley, who works with the government, hasn't even so much as seen a picture of Harry? You have to remember that Harry has been absent from the wizarding world since he was a baby. So it is completely possible that there is just no pictures of grown-up Harry. And people usually recognize Harry by his scar, which is at the moment covered up by his hair. This lot won't come cheap, ma'am. Is there any reason this family full of magical wizards still has to be poor? Like... Can they not use a textbook creating spell or something? I mean, we've got self-cleaning pots and pans here, people. What could this family possibly need money for? Are you saying that slightly moving two objects is on the same level of complexity as making a textbook? You cannot just magically conjure up a full-blown textbook. That's not how magic works. God, I feel like Han Solo. That's not how the Force works. Diagonally! Wouldn't Harry have to be, like... American to mispronounce Diagon Alley the way he does. Harry is about to step in some very hot, hot looking fire. I think a little stutter is justifiable whether you're British or American. Harry just happens to get accidentally sent to a place where he can overhear the Malfoys being evil. This scene is only in the extended edition, not the theatrical cut, so I'm not counting it. And even if I were, I would say you've seen the wrong thing. You see, this thing here is the vanishing cabinet from Half Blood Prince. I know it looks different, but it is the same thing. If Harry closed the door, he would teleport to Hogwarts. Right now, some of you might be saying that the vanishing cabinet at Hogwarts is broken, but that is not the case, because in the books there is actually a scene where Peeves breaks the cabinet later this school year. Rowling truly is the master of foreshadowing and setting things up, but I'm getting off topic. The invisibility booster must be faulty! Yeah, because magic invisibility can break down just like windshield wipers or air conditioning. Magic invisibility is actually infamous for breaking down and not working properly. That is why Harry's invisibility cloak is so special. I know they had a brief adventure with the tree, but why are they so much later in arriving than the students who were on the train? Which they followed here, and presumably arrived at the same time. When students arrive at Hogwarts, they go straight to the Great Hall. They might be just a few minutes behind. Does everybody in this movie carry around with them and expose incriminating items in this story? Another scene that was not in the theatrical cut. In this shot, there are panels open everywhere in this greenhouse, including a huge beanstalk or something coming out of this one. But then when the camera actually goes down into the greenhouse, none of the panels are open. After comparing these two shots, I've concluded that the open window would be somewhere between these two beams and above this bar, which means it is out of sight. And the second window is way too far to see. Mandrake or Mandragora? No! Yes, she is a nerd. No, it is not a sin. So wait, one mandrake scream causes the whole class to put their hands over their ears while wearing earmuffs, but 30 mandrakes all screaming at once brings no discomfort whatsoever. Oh yeah, absolutely no discomfort on these faces. Also, the second time they were expecting the scream, so they were prepared. I don't quite understand. If you're Lockhart and you're a well-known author who has women throwing themselves at you and you're this vain, why would you take a low-paying job as a teacher at Hogwarts? A teaching job at Hogwarts is probably one of the most highly regarded jobs in the wizarding world. Even Lord Voldemort wanted to teach at Hogwarts. Lockhart would definitely want to add this to his list of accomplishments. Gilderoy Lockhart Inception Painting This scene tells you so much about Lockhart's character in a few seconds that it's fucking brilliant. A little quiz. Doesn't Hogwarts set a curriculum? Like, how can professors come in and give quizzes about themselves to the students without that getting out and the professor getting reprimanded? Teachers go off the curriculum in every school ever. Also, this is another deleted scene. Can you possibly imagine a better way to serve detention than by helping me to answer my fan mail? I wonder if this nearly three hour movie will have time to explain how vain Lockhart is. I wonder if this nearly three hour long movie would be any good if it didn't develop any of its side characters. Forming animals into water goblets. Ah, another super useful spell. That's something you probably need on an everyday basis. A high school that teaches something that will not be useful in the everyday lives? This is so unrealistic, right? 
But that is not the point, they have to learn this first before they can do something truly useful. You cannot write a book before you learn to read. Air alone would be able to open the chamber and unleash the horror within and by so doing purge the school of all those who, in Slytherin's view, were unworthy to study magic. Like Filch's cat? Yes, in Salazar Slytherin's view, a cat is definitely not worthy of doing magic. But Mrs. Norris was probably in the wrong place in the wrong time. Just got in the way. School full of magical items have like a spare wand lying around somewhere that this poor bastard can use. Ron probably wouldn't be able to do much better with some random wand. Remember the whole wand chooses the wizard bullshit from the first movie? No one ever comes in here. Why? Moaning Myrtle. How incredibly convenient for our heroes, and how terribly inconvenient for all the girls in the school to have their bathroom choices narrowed down. Are you really that surprised that in this castle, which has probably like hundreds or thousands of rooms, there is a place where no one goes to? If you're sent to Slytherin, the school's basically saying, you're a bad kid. Have fun being an asshole, head. Slytherins are cunning and ambitious. And it just so happens that if a person has these characteristics, he's probably an asshole. And I'm saying this as one asshole to another, Jeremy. We both know it's fun. The snake monster in the Chamber of Secrets must be waiting weeks between victims. We had the cat then the picture kid, then the dark-haired dude, and it's Christmas. Isn't he on some kind of crusade to kill all the mudbloods? No. Tom Riddle even says this at the end of the movie. Haven't I told you? Killing mudbloods doesn't matter to me anymore. For many months now, my new target has been you. This super complicated potion that took a month to create apparently does not need to be measured or administered in any specific amount. Well, in the real world, there is plenty of drugs and substances that take months to make, but you do not need to take any special amount before they take effect. Hagrid tells the kids to go into the dark forest, which he surely knows has a bunch of ravenous spiders waiting to kill them. And for what? No, he does not know that there is a bunch of ravenous spiders waiting to kill them. He thinks they are harmless. Hagrid looks at dangerous creatures through pink glasses, and that is well established at this point. Oh, come on! She's been in here for weeks, but not one doctor, nurse, or professor checked to see if there was a large, wadded-up piece of paper in her hand? I cannot prove this, but I do not think that the page was there when Hermione got petrified. I think it was placed there later. By who, you might ask? I think it was very guilty feeling Draco Malfoy, and the page he placed there was this one. But I'm not gonna give a scene for this, it's just a theory. But not the sin. This page about the basilisk clearly states that the crowing of the rooster can kill it. But instead of seeing that important information, Harry focuses on the spider's flee from it and ends up going into the Chamber of Secrets completely roosterless. There are no roosters that Harry could take to the Chamber of Secrets, because Ginny Weasley killed them all. You might say it is only in the books, but it's not true. In this scene, Hagrid has a dead rooster in his hands, and I think it is enough. Why were the spiders running out of Hagrid's cabin then? Where was the basilisk during that sh The spiders are going back to the place they usually live, and technically they are going further away from the basilisk. Who is it that the monster's taken, Minerva? Ginny Weasley. How does she know which student was taken? The message just says her, without mentioning a name. Oh, I don't know, maybe she checked who is missing? Well, I must say, when I took the job... It's completely illogical that Dumbledore would ever have hired a bumbling, useless wizard like Lockhart to be any kind of teacher at Hogwarts. He was the only person to apply for the job, because of the things that happened with Quarrel last year. And also, Dumbledore wanted to expose him for being a fraud. How does a memory generated from a diary pick up Harry's wand? And if he can do that, why doesn't he do anything else to Harry that might have made killing him easier? He doesn't think he needs to do anything. For him, Harry is as good as dead. He sees no way for him to get out of this. He just wants to toy with Harry. And it is quite in character for Voldemort to make snakes do his killings. So how did Fox the Phoenix get past the spot where the rocks caved in and blocked the path? What's more, what about that snake door that Harry had to speak partial tongue to open? The door clearly closes behind him. Phoenixes can teleport. Ginny, you need to get yourself out. Follow the chamber, and you'll find Ron. Trapped behind a wall of fallen rock that you can't get past. Stop there and wait for more instructions. Are you suggesting she just stays here and starves to death? And as a matter of fact, she can get past the rocks, because she has a wand. If she doesn't have a wand, she can use Harry's, and she knows Wingardium Laviosa. You must have shown me real loyalty down in the chamber. Nothing but that could have called forks to you. Well, it's either that or the convenient storytelling. You are just completely dismissing a completely fine explanation. So the rule is, the house elf becomes free when the master presents him with clothes. Is this really presenting clothes to Dobby? Does Malfoy have to specify every time he gives Dobby a basket of laundry? Now these aren't your clothes, Dobby. These are for cleaning. 
Yes, he has to. And that is why wizards usually don't make house elves do laundry. Goodbye, Dumbledore. Hope you don't look and sound completely different next time I see you. Sinning Richard Harris's death. And using this dumbass Lockhart, who by this time everyone knows is a fraud. Snape is the real teacher there. The Gryffindor house is ransacked, and who does Neville go to? Well, he goes to Harry, because not one adult here seems to give a f about any. Well, it makes sense that Neville goes to Harry, because it was Harry's stuff that got searched. But they forget about all that once Lockhart shows up, telling him he finally has a chance to slay the beast, knowing full well he doesn't have the ability. That was just a sarcastic remark. And now it's time for the scenes they missed. Having a business meeting at 40 past 10? Nope. You just ruined the punchline of my Japanese golfer joke. That's racist. Not a sin. Why would you put your living hand in this undead hand? A 12 year old who has been in no contact with any technology knows how to drive. Ron drops his wand in the car, but later he has it again. Longbottom's been neglecting his earmuffs. No ma'am, he's just fainted. Yeah. How do you know? How would you tell the difference? Look everyone. Weasley's got himself a howler. How would you know that from that far? It looks just like any other letter. I'm starting to think this kid is Nostradamus or something. Oh, and Ginny dear, congratulations on making Gryffindor. Your father and I are so proud. Mrs. Weasley is being a dick to other houses, implying Gryffindor is superior. You may find yourselves facing your worst fears in this room. Foreshadowing prisoner of Azkaban. Not a sin. <laughs> Laugh if you will, Mr. Finnegan! This is the first lesson, and yet Lockhart knows this random person's name. A pixie using a wand. If you knew this spell all along, why wait? Eat slugs! Eat slugs? Couldn't you come up with something like Edere Helica or something? All the other spells have Latin incantations. Why is this eat slugs? Only Harry can understand what the basilisk is saying, but all the other people should be able to hear hissing, right? How did Ginny reach that high? Did she bring a ladder? Walking around like that might make for a more exciting scene, but no teacher would ever do that, because the students at the front have to turn around, and they probably can't hear anything anyways. This ceiling looks like it is the top of a tower, like a dome, which means the basilisk would be on the roof right now. Because that is where the voice is coming from. You better clear off before my bones come back, Dobby, or I might strangle you. <laughs> Dobby is used to death threats, sir. Dobby gets them five times a day at home. If Dobby is so used to death threats, then why does he get so scared when Harry says that? If the ghosts can't touch anything, then how is Myrtle making this splash? Also, how is she flooding the bathrooms? What's bad? If I hadn't told that snake not to attack Justin... Oh, Harry started talking before the snake turned to Justin. Why did the door close on its own? None of them did anything. And it's a memory, so it actually happened. It had to be a Gryffindor. Nobody else knows our password. A weird assumption to make considering she knows two Gryffindors that just went to Slytherin's common room. When Harry and Ron get to Hagrid's, there's a small fire burning outside. Then they have a chat, then they go to the middle of the hidden forest and back, and the fire is still burning! Wizarding World's technology is basically stuck in the Middle Ages. And Hogwarts was built even a few more thousand years back. I'm pretty sure plumbing didn't exist when this chamber entrance was made. And... Plumbing in Hogwarts should be a sin altogether. How do these taps work? There is no pipes going to them. When filming this scene, the actress who plays Moaning Myrtle was 37 years old. So, low-key pedophilia round 2.1. Not a sin. Harry takes way longer to slide down than Lockhart. Voldemort is shit at making anagrams. Not a sin. In a few hours, the Mandrake draft will be ready. And everyone who is petrified will be alright again. How does Harry know that? Is that a bluff? Because if so, it's quite pointless. 
Not that soon. You both realize, of course, that in the past few hours, you have broken perhaps a dozen school rules. Yes, sir. And there is sufficient evidence to have you both expelled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, it is only fitting that you both receive special awards for services to the school. <laughs> the person who is making this video cannot find good scenes, so he is relying on shitty memes. Yes, yes, Harry, take the sword by the sharp blade which possibly has basilisk venom on it. When Dobby just vaguely insults Malfoy family earlier, he has to punish himself. But now he can basically straight up say to Harry that this diary came from Lucius Malfoy, with no punishment. I don't think he could even do that because of how elves are bound to keep their magic families secret. Hermione, welcome back. Nick was petrified before Hermione, so he wouldn't know that she was petrified afterwards. And when he quote unquote came back to life, I don't think he would care to find out. Colin Creevy's camera got destroyed by the basilisk. So that's it for Chamber of Secrets. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to check out the last one I did for Sorcerer's Stone. And don't forget to subscribe to get the next one for Prisoner of Azkaban and many more. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to Patreon slash Captain Swade and support me there. Or you can buy this week's shirt that turned out like this. Links in the description for all of that. Yeah, that's basically it. I don't know how to do outros. I would appreciate it if you shared this video on social media, it helps out a lot. And see you next time.